We're now going to invite Mr. Shane Jones to give us a perspective more so related to the statistics and facts surrounding the COVID-19 cases here in Barbados. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Prime Minister Bradshaw, Ministers Abrams, Bostick, and Jordan, members of the panel, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Um, I, I'm thankful to speak on this vital and serious national importance topic from the perspective of a media professional. Uh, in our line of work, when something like this happens, uh, it's just wide reaching and it has an impact at the national, uh, regional, and international levels, there is so much information that we have to deal with on a daily basis and have been dealing with on a daily basis. I see some of my colleagues like Rachel here, you know, for the last year and a half, we've just been saturated and immersed in these COVID-19 stories. So we follow all the relevant authorities, both here and abroad, uh, to see if the narratives match up. When new variants uh, come out and there is new information on the virus, we cross-check with agencies like the CDC to see what their response is and weigh it against what our own health authorities are doing so we can be as informed as possible to ask the right questions and hopefully get the right answers. However, it's not only what the authorities put out that we follow. It's all of the sectors that are affected. It's the theories, conspiracy or alternative, whatever you want to call them. Uh, but as journalists, it is our duty to examine all angles and do our best to fact check. And it's because we sift through all this information, all these theories that come out on Facebook and, and social media and all these social media platforms, that all of us understand that the fear and the hesitancy that a lot of many of us have is real. Now, this is not to say that all the information out there is real. Um, in fact, what we have found is that a lot of these theories are a lot of the times made up or take a little piece of the truth and twist it, and then the conclusions and the findings are totally false. But what I'm saying is that it has a very real impact on some people. Here's the thing. If many of us are honest about it, we would admit that there's some level of fear with taking a vaccine, any vaccine. When I got my first dose, um, I was a bit skeptical, I won't lie, but I felt like if that was a normal human emotion. So when someone isn't totally comfortable, they tend to cling to anything that tells them don't get the vaccine, regardless of if they think the information is shaky, right? So um, it's something that we've all experienced at some part in our lives. If we don't want to do something and someone says, don't do this because X, Y, or Z, we hold on to that person that says that because we don't want to do it. So we find any information that kind of meshes with what we want to do and hold on to that. But we also have to be very careful with how we respond to everybody's fears. Um, we cannot make people feel like they're doing something wrong for having a normal emotion. So going out as a journalist and speaking to people has taught me that not everyone who is hesitant about taking the vaccine is an anti-vaxxer and that's important to note that and we must not paint everyone with the same brush. Our greatest weapon or maybe not a weapon, um, our, our greatest asset in this fight, in any community's fight against COVID-19 is knowledge. And when I say knowledge, I mean the facts. And I want to be clear right now, I have no vaccine agenda. I respect people's choice. What I'm going to do is share what we know to be the facts from independent media research. So when you make your personal choice, whatever it is, you know what is fact from what is fake. As a media professional, I believe in everyone having a voice and having the right to be heard. However, COVID-19 has presented us with some global ramifications that present a, a, a very different situation. It's so dire that in this specific instance, I hold being truthful over being neutral. So here are the facts. The officials have always told us that the vaccine will not definitely stop us from getting COVID-19, but will prevent us from getting very ill and also even from dying. So what we have done is not just take their word for it, but follow the story to see where the facts suggest and where they lead. Barbados unfortunately recorded um, 48 COVID-19 deaths in total to date. Our first death came in April last year. It was an 81-year-old man who had underlying conditions who had recently traveled to the UK. Now, Barbados started administering vaccines from around mid-February of this year. In the nine months before, between our first death, and when we started administering the vaccines, we recorded a total of 36 deaths from COVID-19. Now, in the six or seven months since the vaccination campaign started, we have had 
12 deaths. Now, that is just a third of the number before the vaccinations began. Now, whatever your view is on the vaccines, those are the factual figures, and they back up the information that the health officials have been saying that the vaccines will stop people from getting very ill and dying. So before we had the vaccines, we recorded 36 deaths. After we had the vaccines, we recorded 12 deaths. And if we look at those numbers even more closely, six of those 12 deaths in that period after the vaccine, vaccine started came in March, which is just after the vaccine rollout. So chances are that most of those casualties might, might have been infected before the campaign started in mid-February. So you can cut that number by half again. Remember I was saying that we try to weigh what's happening here with the international information. So the CDC in America is reporting that the over 163 million fully vaccinated people in the U.S. have protection against all known variants and their jobs are preventing them from severe illness, hospitalization and death. So that was another fact that checked out and is being mirrored here. In terms of our own cases, if we go back to December 1st last year, we stood at a total of 278 confirmed COVID-19 cases. By March 1st of this year, three months later, we moved to 3,155 cases. That's 2,837 cases in that period, and this is before the vaccine started. Now, if we look at March 1st to June 1st, which were the next three months after the vaccine began, we recorded 902 cases. That was almost 2,000 cases down in an equivalent three-month period. So as far as the data shows, the difference there was the vaccines. At that point on June 1st, we had 60,553 people fully vaccinated. Now we come to our present results, almost another three-month period. We're just a couple weeks shy of another three-month period. And yesterday we stood at 4,548 cases, representing a further 531 cases. So while we had over 60,000 fully vaccinated in the first three months period, when we look at the numbers in this one, it's 40,483. So we have been able to equate vaccines to lower deaths and lower cases. Those are the facts of the figures. And I'm not choosing sides, really I'm not. It's just where the research has led us. So what does this information say to us? We couldn't just look at the figures um, here in Barbados in the bubble, right? We needed some kind of context in terms of what is going on around us in our region. In Dominica, a, region, a recent surge with some days reporting more than 100 cases have led to lockdowns again. Rises in cases in St. Lucia and Jamaica have also led to new restrictions. What we in the fraternity have noticed that over the past year and a half is that in the region, there have been similar responses to COVID-19 spikes. So if we had another rise in cases here, we could probably expect the implementation of more protocols and more measures. And that is why it is important to know the encouraging effect the vaccine has been having on our figures. And internationally, the stats continue to suggest that the virus will be with us for a very long time. Even with some of the nations that we thought were doing really well, just today, today alone in Australia, Australia recorded their highest number of cases in a state in one day, with Canberra recording 478 cases today. Then when you look at Iceland, what is happening there backs up the vaccine info. While they are having record numbers of cases, they have not had a single death since May 25th. They are having record numbers of cases in Iceland, the most they have ever had, but they have not had a death since uh, May 25th. What's the difference? They have 70.6% of their population vaccinated, and there's a Delta variant there. So they have recorded the most cases they've ever recorded, but have not had a death in months with a 70.6 um, percentage uh, population vaccination. So the data has shown that when our vaccination campaign is thriving, both deaths and cases have dropped. I would only imagine that once vaccine uptake is good, we are more likely to keep away from spikes and avoid another lockdown. Um, but I'll leave the health experts to, to ratify that. Um, what we have learned though is that many people struggle with their personal fears versus a type of social responsibility. So we have a choice about if to take the vaccine or not. That is our choice. But then there's a decision on the part of each individual in terms of the role they play in order for us to be partying again, to be not worrying about masks, going to sporting events again. The facts show that the sure way to get to that stage is 
by taking the vaccine. I believe it's only fair that, but, but it depends on the individual decision if we get to that stage or not. So while I would never try to bully anyone into taking the vaccine, it is fair that everyone has factual information when making their personal decision, because it's still, at the end of the day, your personal decision. And what I want to leave with you is that the same way it is your choice to say no to the vaccine, if after reviewing the facts and the figures you change your mind, that is also your right. Even if you are the biggest person against the vaccine posting on social media telling your friends you will never take the vaccine, no one can get upset with you if you have evolved in your position, because that decision as well must also be respected. And I want to thank you for me sharing some of these findings.